is a welterweight showdown between Michael Maverick Chiesa and Neil Magny. well-rounded fighter in this division, a true mixed martial artist at his core, and he believes he'll have a lot of advantages in this matchup. Tonight. Everyone talked about him being well-rounded. It's unbelievable to watch a guy that can do everything across the board at such a high level. Yeah, he's comfortable wherever the fight goes. Maybe he'll grapple tonight, maybe he'll strike. Makes him a hard guy to prepare for. This guy has truly made the takedown a thing of beauty in mixed martial arts with respect to yourself and George St. Pierre and the truly great takedown artists. This guy's closing the gap and, and entering that company in the eyes of men. Oh, absolutely, because he's done such a great job of timing takedowns. You didn't see, I haven't seen anyone so good at slipping a jab into a takedown since George St. Pierre. Right. He does a phenomenal job of getting from step one to step two before his opponent even realizes, now he's in on my leg. And if they do get their hip back, immediately he's up into a foot sweep, or a headlock, or an inside trip. It's just so many different ways for him to get you to the floor that he will throw every single one at you every single time. And a lot of fighters talk about that wrestling maintenance and how hard it is, right, over the course of a career to continue to drill those things. He talks a lot about that, and that's why he's continued to realize success here in the UFC. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 25 wins, nine losses. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Denver, Colorado, USA, Neil Magny. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 18 wins, six losses. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Spokane Valley, Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, an ultimate fighter season winner, Michael Maverick Kiesa. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Lavigne. The veteran Eve Lavigne draws the assignment here. You ready? You ready? Fight. All right, so the fight is now underway. We'll see how long it goes. You've got a submission specialist on one side, and on the other side, maybe the most well-rounded fighter in this division. Yeah, he is one of the best fighters in the entire UFC. But in front of him, he has one of the most dangerous fighters across all divisions in the octagon because that one skill he has is so good that you're, un you're in danger the entire time. Close guard. Kies has attempted to pass here, but he's denied by the defense. All right, half guard now. Not a fighter you want in half guard against you for the bottom fighter. What does he need to do? He needs to secure his underhook. He's got to be fighting, fighting, fighting for underhook. One of the most key things you can do as a bottom fighter is now try to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm, it's the shoulder pressure that usually makes it. He actually goes to an omoplata. Great pressure going forward by the top. Not tapping out tonight. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in half guard. Absolutely more offensive options, because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestler stand-up. Get to your knees, post your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hook. But get to your hands, stand up, fight the hands, break away and escape. But it's so much more free-flowing than a half guard in the side control, because all you need to do is just get the opponent's body up because his legs are just free to move. His legs are not controlling anything. His legs are just free, so you have more freedom to use yours. Under two minutes to go in our fourth round. 
first round. Oh, strong punch there by Kies. Really using his reach advantage there with that punch to see. Well, you gotta stay busy on the bottom. He's doing it here. Nice punch. Man, how fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman, just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter. He's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. 25 total strikes have now landed for Neil Magny. Oh, nice strike landed there by Neil Magny. Massive head kick. Oh, straight right. 20 seconds now remain in the rack. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. Oh, man. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. All right, so we now look back at some of the action from that previous round, DC. A lot of good highlights on both sides. I mean, a lot of good highlights from both competitors. They both should be very proud of what they accomplished. But I'm telling you, man, I'm not sure they can keep this up. If they land at this clip for another five minutes, somebody's going to sleep. Closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Yes, it gets the takedown. Nice hammer fist. Both fighters back to their feet now. Oh, beautiful takedown by him there as he lands another one. He's keeping the stack guys busy tonight. I mean, over and over, take down the tip. After. Looks like he's trying to isolate an arm here, DC. Yeah, he's isolating it to try to get a Kimura here. And this might just be a matter of time. is really remarkable to watch. All right, full guard here, DC. What does he need to do to improve position? Well, he's got to start to build his posture, get some damage off, move the half guard, which in turn leads to more opportunities for advancement. But if you're on the bottom, you got to anticipate those movements the moment he tries to move to the next position. You build a shield, get back to your feet, or dig an underhook to try to get a reversal or a sweep. All right, to the mound. I mean, how many can he take? We pass the midpoint here of the fight. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah, no pity pack to this guy. This guy's trying to land. He's trying to land effective strike. Oh, all right, he's got the full mount now, DC, and he has proven to be a hard guy to buck off in this position. Oh, because he's so heavy. Keeps his weight down. He really does grind on you with his with his bottom half. He doesn't do anything with his arms. His arms are free to punch. He's collecting you with his hips and his legs, making you make a determination as to whether or not you want to get grounded pounded in the mat, or if you're gonna give your back up, where he will then start to chase choke. A lot of energy expenditure defensively if you are the bottom fighter in this equation. All right, so he postures up here, and now figures to rain down some ground strikes. Yeah, the ground and pound will be a plenty in this position. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Well, the ground and pound is there once again. Strong work here by Neil Mack. All right, this position now, what we call the north-south. If you're the bottom fighter, what are you trying to do to get out of home? Man, it's tough on the bottom. It's very tough because everything hurts, right? It doesn't matter that they're not completely driving the shoulder in. It just, everything hurts. So you wait for your opponent to go to his next action. And when he does, you go and attack the hands. You get to your knees and you attack the hands with both hands and try to feel the lock so you can get to your feet.
You might have known me, but you do not know me. It's anxious. Like, wait. All right, let's get you some pictures from that previous round, DC. A lot of good work with the ground and pound strike. Yeah, he was able to control posture, get himself postured up, land big ground and pound as he ended the round. What a great finish to a fantastic round. All right, here we go, DC. Our next round is underway, and he's chasing some punch down records tonight. That was some serious volume and efficiency in the previous round. Normally, you see that in boxing where a guy Right. This man has taken it to the octagon, looking to break all the punch records before the night is over. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this? Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Nice kick. Well, he has landed some good shots, DC, but really unable to string anything together in terms of solid combinations. It's because he's not committing to it fully. He throws his jab. He may throw the right hand out there, but he's not really sitting down with the right hand. He really doesn't seem to have the intent on landing it. He's got to be confident that it's going to land, and he's got to really throw his whole entire body into those strikes. Well, you see him land the jab there. He's got the reach advantage. He might as well use it. And just inch it. Nice double leg takedown attempt there. And you gotta think that's something that's gonna give him confidence moving forward in this fight. A lot of confidence when it happens that easily. Took a shot, he got a takedown. What now will stop him from doing it over and over again? All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you gotta be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Well, hard to win fights in mixed martial arts from the bottom, but nice work here in that position by Mag. Trying to recover from the guard there. Oh, pretty good entry there, and he gets the fight to his wheelhouse on the ground. Beautiful takedown into the full guard. Look at the posture and use ground and ground to open up submission opportunities. Magni gets back up. Well, not sure if he's lighter on his feet or what it is, but these last couple of rounds, he's been far more aggressive, a lot more. Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. And a nice job at least staying upright on that. Body kick now by Chiesa, though. Yeah, he got it done with the striking. And that's exactly what he's known for. He's known as a guy that's so comfortable whenever he's in the stand-up. And that showed tonight as he truly outworked his opponent. The official decision is in. Bruce Buffer has three rounds. He goes to the judges' court cards for a decision. All three judges score the contest 30 27. Play the winner by unanimous decision. Congratulations to him. He is your winner by unanimous decision and certainly a dominant performance here tonight. Yeah, he did a great job of just dictating and controlling all the engagements of this fight. His opponent never really had an opportunity to lead the dance. He did that start to finish, and he wins a unanimous decision.